Okay, so yeah, we're ready to start. So welcome back to the stream. Um, we're gonna continue where we left off um, last time. Um, but first, I'm gonna show you some things that I've done um, since then. Um, yeah, so yeah, I've done I've done mainly two things. So first of all, I I, I did what I what I said I would do, uh, which is um, I uh, restructured the code. So f actually, f first I've restructured the code for the ES framework, which is now using uh, assembly definitions. So so I so I had a structure for for ES framework, but uh, I really wanted to to use assembly definitions for faster compilation, so I wouldn't have to compile ES framework every time I change something in the in a game project. And um, actually, let me get back this. Yeah. And so yeah, I have a structure where yeah, I group things by by features, and in each folder for for a feature, um, I have a runtime and an editor folder. It is so 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 yeah. So I have scripts related to the editor in a separate uh, assembly assembly file than the one for the for the runtime stuff. And I have uh, at, the, at, the, at the root of the project I have a folder with those two uh, assembly definitions. And yeah, that's that's how the whole um, the whole ES framework is structured. So the editor folder, the runtime one, and there are cases where I where I've uh, made him, uh, yeah went even deeper, but uh, still kept the, the structure with the editor and runtime. Yeah, as I said, I use uh, assembly definitions everywhere. So, or yeah, I have two assembly definitions, and uh, in each editor or runtime folder, I have uh, assembly references. Assembly definition references to those those two up top, and I have taken a, a similar approach uh, for for the game. So we have uh, yeah I, I've grouped I grouped everything in in a similar fashion. So uh, let's say the enemies. So the enemies have yeah some runtime stuff, which is right now the the dummy enemy. And it has. Uh, I, I've I've uh, made the assembly definitions for uh, for those things too. And then we have uh, the spawner for the enemies, which again has a runtime folder and uh, with everything in it. And I kept this uh, the same structure everywhere. So we have managers, different managers for the game. It has uh, an assembly definition reference and uh, and all the scripts. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the, the the structure that I kept. Um, yeah, and we're gonna continue with this. So basically, group uh, group uh, yeah scripts by features. So by by yeah features, I guess I don't know. So everything about the tower, it's in the tower folder. Uh, everything about the tower entity, it's in here. Or the modules of the tower, they have their own scripts, and the tower itself has has things that it has uh, like, yeah, different utils things, and uh, the the global tower date, and yeah, so yeah, this is how I thought of grouping things. I mean, I I I haven't worked a lot with it because I I've just kind of just changed it so. We'll see in time if if it was a good decision. I will be able to change it anytime, so it so it won't be a problem if I if I find it is not uh, is not okay. But yeah, so so yeah, that's the that's the first thing I've done. Uh, I've um, refactored, I mean refactored, but uh, rearranged the the project and uh, uh, started using assembly definitions. And the second thing that I've done is uh, so I started working uh, on uh, input for the game and I've created this controls manager 
what this control manager is gonna do is yeah so first of all it's a service so the service it's a it's a class from from es framework which basically yeah by implement and and the uh, and it's a scriptable object so the service it's a uh, it's a scriptable object that has this function um i have to that yeah it requires it to, to implement this function so what this uh, what this service does is by implementing some certain uh, interfaces, you'll be able to uh, so or the or the or that uh, reset function will be, will be called um, whenever the thing you implemented is. So for for example, here is on scene loaded. So whenever a scene is loaded, um, uh, not not the reset function is going to be called directly, but there is for for each interface there is, a, there is a specific function so this is the one for once in loaded so so this this function is going to be called and it's going to tell you what what scene uh, was loaded and then you can you can um, call the reset function um and basically yeah so whenever the whenever a scene is loaded uh, the reset function is going to be called and it's going to do some stuff which in this case is um, yeah so we have we have the game controls which is a class made by by the input system which uh, has all the references to yeah or or all the bindings that I for for the controls of the game which right now it's only for for movement but even even that isn't used because uh, uh, that's what we're, gonna, what we're gonna work on today, most probably. But yeah, so what it does, uh, if it has, so so when when a new scene is loaded, it's gonna just get rid of the old uh, all the of the old assets, so it's gonna disable it and then dispose of it if it, if it exists. That we have this uh, question mark in here. And then we're gonna create a new one, a new instance, and we're gonna enable it so so it receives input. Uh, I have to. Take a short break.
Okay, so I'm back. Uh, sorry for the for this. I the guys from the electrical company came and uh, yeah, because I I didn't had electricity last night or more like the whole day yesterday and last night. And they came to check things out, so I had to I had to talk to them a bit. Okay, so where were we? Oh yeah, so uh, so we were talking about the the controls manager. So yeah, as I said, um, yeah, we have this controls manager with the service, which basically means that this reset function is gonna be called whenever whenever a scene is loaded. So and yeah, when that happens, if we had a previous, uh, can you reset for the Yes, I can. Um, I think I can. Log volume. Is it better? I don't know if it's better. I could just get the uh, the music a bit down. Maybe I don't know. I haven't tested it. Out. I don't know why the music is up because it wasn't like the levels were not that high in previous streams. Hmm. Let's try doing this. I don't know if this is better. But the music is the problem. Okay, so I'm so I'm not okay. Okay, let's get the music in here and let's try to get my volume up. I don't know how much of a difference it's gonna make, but you're gonna tell me, I suppose. Let's try this. Okay, so let's leave it like this. Just that sound is lower than the video. Okay. Okay, so is, so is it better now? Am I, uh... It's okay? Cool. It's good because on the recording, uh, it's not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna have music, so yeah. But for the stream, yeah, it would be bad. Okay, so getting back to this, yeah, as I was saying, in this reset function, we're gonna uh, disable and then dispose of the previous controls that we had. Just uh, and we're gonna create a new one, and just so that we don't have any. Uh, lingering um, listeners on it um, yeah we're just gonna whenever the game is reset or something we're just gonna clean it out and start again with uh, with a brand new uh, asset we're gonna enable it and then i'm doing some um, some things to know uh, so, so 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 on top of knowing when a button is pressed or whatever when you uh, any kind of input I would like to know if you're using uh, uh, a keyboard on mouse or or a gamepad because um, we would like to or yeah most likely we would like to show some uh, yeah show some controls on the on the screen and whenever you switch the device or whatever depending on the device you're using we'd like to, to have different uh, uh, yeah different controls shown on the screen so this is what I'm doing here. So yeah, I have um, yeah, there are more, so I have a I have an action here, which actually now that I think about it, it should be an event. So this should be an event. Yeah, so so I have an event that I can subscribe to, and it's gonna tell me whenever the the current device is changed. So you can be on your, uh, you can play on your keyboard and then switch to the gamepad and the game is going to react to it after that we're going to get so, so yeah i'm going to get the, i'm going to get the controls oh actually let's start by looking the, at what i've done with the controls so so right now the controls are, are very simple we have this camera action map and then one action which is move which is either uh, driven by the left stick on the gamepad or WASD on the keyboard. And what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do in the code is, whenever I get an event from from the input system, I look at which uh, a, a control scheme I'm using, either the gamepad or the keyboard. So that's what I'm doing here. I know the the, the keyboard 
Kratos is the first one, so I'm gonna take the first control scheme. And then I'm gonna listen to all the actions that are that are happening on this uh, on this camera uh, action map. And when that happens, I have yeah I have this piece of code. So I'm looking at whatever the input system is gonna give me, which is the con uh, the, the context, and I'm gonna try the the device out of it. If I don't get if I don't know the device. I'm just gonna say that uh, I'm not sure what the device is, so I'm gonna set the current device to unknown. But if I do know, I'm gonna look at, um, yeah, I'm gonna take the device, I'm gonna see if it's uh, supported by uh, the keyboard and mouse scheme, and if it is, I know it's a mouse and keyboard, otherwise it's a gamepad. It's a bit weird how it's implemented, but that's the way, yeah, currently, that's the way to do it in uh, an input system. Um, or at least if you want to do it by yourself. Uh, there is another option of using um, a custom component from them, which is the player input. And uh, yeah, the comp that component does exactly this. It, uh, it has uh, uh, methods uh, that uh, tell you the device, uh, the, the device the player is using currently but uh, do, yeah um, using that would have been more complicated um, mostly because it's uh, so so that player input is a mono behavior and I don't want to have the so so I want to have the controls used in a lot of places and those places might be their services which are as I said, scriptable objects. So I want something that, that I can uh, reference wherever I want in the project. So that's why I'm, I want this controls manager also to be a scriptable object. So yeah, I have to basically re-implement whatever the, the player input uh, component does. And yeah, this is, uh, I mean, I, yeah, this is one way of doing it actually. The, the the worst part of this is this piece of code. Assuming that the first control scheme is the keyboard and mouse, if that ever changes, this whole thing is gonna break. But uh, yeah, um, it is uh, it is what it is. <laughs> if uh, if it comes to that, uh, yeah, I'll I'll have to tackle it some somehow yeah another way i don't know there are things i can do it without this so instead of having this scheme and using the support the support device in here maybe i could um, somehow check this device if it's a key or a mouse based on a name or based on a type i haven't yeah i haven't found how i how i can do that based on a type because this this last device right here it says it's an input device uh, but this, uh, but there are, yeah, there are multiple classes that implement this. Like, uh, yeah, there are classes for keyboard, input, gamepad, uh, in, uh, keyboard, mouse, gamepad, and uh, whatever else, uh, devices they support. But I haven't, got, I haven't had uh, how to how to use those uh, those types to to check if they're the same. So so I just uh, went with this approach. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. And um, one last thing. Yeah. So so right here we're setting the current device, either unknown or uh, mouse and keyboard or gamepad, uh, whichever we detect it is. And this is a. This is a. Setter. So or it has a getter to get the value, or and it also has a setter, and the setter does uh yeah if it's the same device it's not gonna do anything otherwise it's gonna set the current device and then invoke our event. so whoever wants to know when the device change uh, changes uh, uh yeah it will just have to to subscribe to this uh, to this event and uh, gonna receive the new the new device whenever it's uh, whenever it, uh, it changes and uh, yeah that's kind of it um, 
yeah, I'm exposing uh, the um, the action maps uh, through properties. So, for example, the camera actions, which are so this is the action map that I have right now with the with the move method or the move action, whatever. And I'm exposing it through this uh, through this property. I could expose this, or yeah, but uh, there are multiple things on this, uh, on this asset that I I wouldn't want to have exposed uh, to the outside. So yeah, I'm just gonna get action maps out of it and just expose those. But uh, yeah, we'll see in the future if we get multiple action maps. Uh, we'll see if if this still um, uh, yeah. If still, if this is still uh, still a good approach. Okay. Um. Yeah. So so this is what I've done since since the last stream. And yeah. Now let's get uh, started with um, whatever I have planned for today. So yeah, we're gonna start with a simple task. Uh, let me see how I can. How I can show this. Actually, let me get those out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so last time we we did a task for. Yeah, we did the uh, we did the upgrade definition asset, which had uh, a bunch of stuff that defined an object. And. Uh, in the game, it looks something like, oh, come on, compile. So in the game, let's see, where are our upgrades? Uh, no, this is the code. I don't want the code. I want here. Uh, inspector, please. Yeah, so this is how it looks in the game. Um, yeah. So we have all the all the all, all those values here. We we have them defined in the asset. But one thing that I that I forgot about is adding a cost to each upgrade. So that's what we're gonna do. For yeah, in the in the in the levels uh, in this levels array, um, uh, yeah, we'll have a multiplier and a cost for for the, for the upgrade. Because yeah, you'll have to pay something for for each upgrade. So that yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna add right now. This is gonna be relatively easy because it's just a field, and yeah, no, no one's using it at the moment, so we're just gonna add it and just be done with it. So let's see. So we wanna go to upgrade definitions, which should be here, and upgrade definition this one. So as I said, I wanna add it to the multiplier which would be in here so the cost will be an int uh, not an input user that an int okay so public int cost um yeah let's put a default of zero maybe or one that's uh, and one without an f so let's say one will have a uh, Minimum value, minimum value of, of, for one. It doesn't make sense to have a that has a value of zero by default. And let's see how we can do this. Um, I want to add a suffix label and uh, set the uh, measurement unit. So this is gonna be what we call in the game. Uh, coins coins so those upgrade coins are going to receive at the end of a, uh, at the, at the end of a level after uh, after you you expand the door and yeah you'll be able to use uh, those coins to to upgrade the to to increase the level of the upgrades okay so that let's see how it looks in the game yeah so we have them here Uh, yeah, that's the custom name. You have the multiplier and then the cost, and you have upgrade coins in, at the end here. Uh, 
I would like to do something here for this multiplier, but I wonder how I can do it. So, so it'd be interesting. So, so, so this number it's it's easy for me to to see to, to or to understand because yeah, I I use percentages uh, uh, with values from zero to one. But for level designer, um, I think it would be much easier to see them as real percentages, like 100% or something. So I wonder if I can add at the end here a um, display of what this number uh, represents in actual per percentages. So, so one simple way I can think about is let's look at the of the suffix label and see if it can accept no it doesn't accept a i, I was uh, wondering if it if, if, if it accepts um, an expression here so i could write a, a function that just multiplies this by 100 and adds a percent at the end but it, it takes a string actually no, let's let's try it. Maybe maybe just the documentation is not right. So let's try. So so we we want a suffix label and actually no. Let's start by seeing if this is from. Uh, it, it is from from Odin. So so we're so we're good here. So let's try to do. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm sure it's not gonna work. But let's try. So. Let's try to do something like this. If if we get the the string instead of the number two at the end, uh, yeah, it doesn't work with. Uh, I expect a token int thirty two. Okay, so so you can't use values. Okay, but it actually no, that's 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 actually good because it understood what I wanted to say. Okay, so let's do a private float multiplier. As as percentage, uh, let's reformat. So let's what I'm gonna do. So I want uh, I'm gonna percent sign at the end, and then I want the multiplier multiplied by 100, and I want to be a, to have maybe two. Uh, uh, so yeah, this is not a flow, this is a string. Let's try... Yeah, let's try this. Let's see what it does. There we go. And now that I think about it, those numbers, you know, I can add more things to it. Yeah. Yeah. And now we have the percentage at the end, and I want to try that, uh, that other thing that it had. So this overlay thing, I'm just assuming it's going to be drawn on top of the, on top of the label and the, or the, or the input. Yeah, that looks much better. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the cost, actually. Uh, that looks way, way better. And actually... I'm gonna add another thing in here, so if the multiplier is more than zero, or... Yeah. More or equal to the z zero. I'm gonna add a plus, otherwise I'm gonna add nothing. And I can't write this. Maybe if I put it in a parenthesis, I can. Yeah. I just wanna add a plus in here. Or, or actually, does it make sense to have a... No, so plus one, 120%. No, actually it doesn't make sense to have a plus in there. Actually, it does make sense if I subtract one from the multiplier but then i will have to subtract one from this too because it's not 
actually no if it's above zero no if it's above one that's what i want what i want to plus yeah so if i say 2.55 is plus 155 percent if i go below one i'm just gonna yeah decrease the value so minus 29 percent and yeah, I don't want fixed. Uh, I think it's. I have to write it with D to get uh, to get rid of the the zeros at the end. If there are none, oh, it's not with D. Okay. So so what are my options in here? I thought it was with F. I, I'm pretty sure we had a, a, a D in here. Okay, so yeah, we even have a percentage. That's interesting. But yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that myself. Never mind. Yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna keep the. Actually, let's keep it with F1. Yeah, let's keep it like this. And also, can we? Um... Can we do this? Oh yes, we can. Nice. Let's see if it still compiles and it does the right thing. Yes, it does. Nice. So if I put a two in there, one point two, it's it means plus twenty percent. That's amazing. And this is one upgrade coin. And I can even make this. <laughs> fancy and whenever there's a one here it uh, takes out the s at the end but yeah never mind that's much of a polish doesn't even matter but this one this one is gonna be great plus sign and the the percentage yeah cool okay so we have the cost now which we are for a while because we yeah we'll need coins to be able to upgrade this so this is gonna take a while for us to have the cost we have this fancy little thing and actually now that, now, now that I've done this this uh, this at the end I might just try to do it for all the the other suffixes that because that looks actually really good so let's try to do that. Even if it's not in the in the scope of the task, I'm just gonna do it right now because it looks so much better. Actually, let's look at what what so so what what have we changed? We we've changed the dummy spawner. Let's look at the dummy spawner and see. Let's look at what we've actually changed. Yeah, so so it so we have uh, units per second in there. Cool. Yeah, that looks good. And we don't have music. Let's get some more music in here. What should we listen to? Yeah, thousand scratch. Sounds like a good idea. And actually, where are my other? Those are not all my albums. YouTube. What the hell are my albums? If you say this is in my no, this is not in my library. What the hell? Okay, that's weird. Okay, let's add back all my albums. Cause... Sure. Okay, let's get back and yeah, let's start this. Okay. Yeah, so we're doing this. Let's... let's adding this uh, true at, at the end of everything actually can I do it in here ah damn that's so much easier and this has and this has okay so they're all having true at the end Let's see a couple of them. So global tower data. Let's look at the global tower data, which is I guess here. 
Yeah. Yeah, so we have meters in here. Let's see what else. What else? Tower module data. Let's go to our, where are objects, tower modules, uh, and here. Uh, eh, this is one that I, I, I don't like. I mean, I don't like it because it's, it's so small. But that is because I think we've defined. No, we actually didn't. Mm. Okay, so this, so we the step. It is a step range, which means that I can make input that input a bit larger because it's defined in here somewhere. So actually, apparently not. So this is the int slider, and apparently we don't have a way. Or we should have a way of controlling that. I'm sure there is a way of controlling the, the size of that input. But if it's not, that's going to be so sad. Because I would have to put the degrees outside of that. Yeah, so apparently we can't. It is sad. So we, we can change that. So for the tower module data, we're not going to use true in here. Because it doesn't look good with, with large numbers. It's just... Yeah. Yeah, we have to keep it uh, on the side. Let's see. Where else have we used this? Let's actually let's look through here. So we have degrees here. Uh, wait. Tower aligned component. Oh, yeah. So... Yeah. Okay. Let's let's do it like this. Cause uh, halfway through this, we started not looking at the, not opening the the. Yeah. So this is the tower mod uh, global tower data. Let's look at this. So tower aligned component. Where do we have that? Let's get a. I think the straight component had some some types of components. Yeah. We have degrees in here and meters in here. That's awesome. But what I don't like in here is that they don't share the same space. So it's not space is not shared equally. Equally. So, but that's that's such a small thing. It's stupid that, it, that, 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 that the space is not it's not shared equally. Anyway. It, this is still here, and this is the new component. Yeah, so that's everything actually. Okay. Yeah, that that looks so much. Okay, let's um, log the time for this task. Elaborate. So feature. And then, um, yeah, because this, um, let's see how, no, how should we say we did this? Added most of ah, as overlays, yeah. Cool. So one task done. Now we're gonna go into. We're gonna have a, a bit of fun with with a new task. I mean, not a new task. We're gonna refactor some some code we've done. Actually, last stream.
Yeah, so let's see. Let's see what it is. Actually, let's start. Let me start the timer first, and then uh, I'm gonna start talking about it. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go back a bit to to our supply and do some uh, some refactoring in here. So last time we we did uh, um, well actually I think it was two streams ago actually not last time but anyway uh, so we did this uh, so so for each spline we did, we did the cache uh, for for the points of the of the spline so instead of recalculate the the spline uh, whenever we we needed to evaluate with uh, evaluate it. We just pre-calculate and cache the some samples from the from the spline, so that we we can easily uh, get a value out of the spline. Where is it? Um, yeah. So this is the function right now. So we get a percentage. And uh, yeah, we just look in the cache array and just yeah, get the uh, get the position. Uh, yeah, get the position for that percentage, and then return. So this is much simpler than what we had before. And actually, what we had before is exactly this code above, which is yeah, go through all the through all these segments and then do some math of calculating okay where am I on this segment from the whole spline and just uh, do some lerps for the angle and the height and then return that I mean it worked but it wasn't um, not as uh, as fast as just uh, what doing a multiplication this this is nothing this multiplication is also nothing a clamp a floor paint yeah and then just look up into a into an array like this is much 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 simpler than this it's much simpler to understand what this does also uh, with this you'll have to to think for a bit what why it does things uh, a certain way so yeah um what we're gonna work now on is this piece of code so this is cache calculation so thinking of and this is not we have a we don't have an issue with performance but or at least not on my machine but um, what I what I would like to do is um, use uh, use burst and and jobs to to make this piece of code multi-threaded and just so basically making it run much faster and on all the cores of of your system. So that's the, what we're gonna try to do today. Just multi-thread this piece of code, which which sounds so complicated, but it should just uh, work out. Um, super easy. Yeah. So first of all, so the jobs uh, are a part of Unity, but the, uh, the but the burst compiler it's not. So we'll have to to get the burst compiler. I don't think I've installed it yet. No, I haven't. Okay, so we're gonna get a burst compiler. I mean, we just not use the burst compiler, but and just do do the jobs. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, the burst compiler make things so so much uh, faster. So there's no reason not to use it.
And yeah, as I said, uh, problem of performance with this, uh, but uh, I'd like to try try using jobs more in even though this piece of code is running the editor. Uh, yeah, I'd like to try to use uh, jobs more and uh, burst compile them. I've I've used them for a bit in in our last project, the Equinox Sun, but right at the end. So there's one place where I where I've used jobs. And, uh, I mean, use jobs personally because we have packages that use and that jobs for different uh, for di for different things. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't tested this more, so I don't know if this is fixed or not. I'm going to keep this code in here, even though we're going to do the job. Um, yeah, to to have uh, to have something to compare to. But now, actually, let's uh, let's start by seeing what what we're what we're doing here. So. Um, yeah, so we, have, we don't have the scope, but we're not going to do anything. We're going to set up some variables. For example, the cache index, the size of the, of the, of the array, the array itself. And then all the magic is happening in our for loop. And this is actually, this is what we're going to. Um, move to to a job, and we're gonna see how how we can do that. Okay, so I think we can start in here. Um, I'm probably gonna move the code somewhere else, but um. This is struct. This is what we want. So a parallel four. And let's see what we have to implement to make this. so execute and then we have an index. That sounds perfect to me. Okay, let's see what 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 things we need. So so we're gonna need um Oh, I might have to install another package as well, but we're gonna see. So we're gonna need, uh, do we need the root position? Let's see if we use it. Yeah, we need it because we have to access this. Or we're gonna, we're, we'll have to use this function. Um, okay. Um, uh, previously, or in, yeah, in previous version, Unity, you had to specify that, uh, or you had to specify for each job if you wanted to to burst compile them. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, from from I don't know which version, but uh, now it's uh, that functionality functionality is turned on by default, and you can specify if you want to not to to burst compile them for some reason, like. You're doing something with, uh, yeah. You want access to the main thread or something, and you you don't want to use the burst compiler because that would not allow you to to access things. But for now, for or I mean, for us, uh, we we definitely want to burst compile this. That's the whole idea. So let's see what what do we need for this. So so first, we're gonna need uh, an array to store store the result. So, um, yeah, that's what we need. So, so we need a native array of, of what? That's, that's a good question. A native array of what? This is a vector three. So we're not going to use vector trees. We're going to use float three, which we don't have. So we're going to have to install uh, unity mathematics. 
fix for that. So this, um, yeah, uh, let's install this. What I actually know, I think I have to comment this so so I can access the editor. So yeah, that float three is similar to to a vector three. The difference is that this new thematics package that Unity has made is, is much better understood by by the burst compiler, and it's able to 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 write a, a more efficient code, basically. And I'm seeing it in here, so. And it's not in here. Okay, uh, that's not a problem because I know I know how to install it. But uh, so it's com dot unity dot mathematics without this space. So that should do it. There we go. And this is so weird. Oh wait, have we just installed it, or was it here already? But we didn't see the flow three. I'm confused. Let's look at the package uh, or, the, or the manifest just on. No, we definitely installed it right now. Okay. I don't know why it's not in the list because it is it is a very package. So we should see it in the list. But it wasn't there. Now it shows up. We might have just... Uh, we, we should have... Uh, Refresh the list, maybe. maybe that that would have made it uh, show up in the in the list. Anyway, we have it, so so that's that's good now. So on this uh, flow three reference assembly mathematics, yes, exactly. That's what we wanted to. Say. Okay, so now a thing that we have to do. Yeah, now uh, that we have to do now that we have um, assembly definitions, we have to to specify. Uh, yeah, what other what other uh, assembly definitions or modules we wanna we wanna reference in our project. So we want Unity Mathematics for this because we wanna accept whatever is in this uh, in these assembly definitions in our code. So we're going to say that we want that. And now he's going to know what the float 3 is, or at least I can just import it. And it's going to be result. Uh, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make a constructor and just uh, what do you want from me? Yeah, just put a uh, yeah, like this. <coughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna create this uh, <coughs> this native array outside of the job and then just pass it to the job and then use the the values from it. Uh, after the job is completed, but we have to pass it to the job so we can we can use it in the execute function. Okay, now let's look at this. Uh, actually, let's do something smart. Let's split this file into two and have the the code side by side, so it's easier to follow. So let's actually let's get the code the code in here, and let's get our yeah our job in in, in the left panel. Okay, so. What are we trying to do? So we're gonna loop through. Yeah, so we'll need to know about our waypoints, which actually this might not be great. So what our our waypoints is an array of what of structs. Actually, that's gonna that is gonna be good. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna look through all our waypoints. And so yeah, that's one thing we're gonna have here. Way uh, way points. Waypoint. 
Let's copy this again. Let's add it in here. Let's put it on two lines. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to loop through all the waypoints. And yeah, now that's an, inter an interesting thing. So we. Yeah. Actually, let's try to see how we can schedule uh, this job because I wonder how we can specify the length of the. Yeah, the length of the. I mean, how many things are in the job? So let's let's look at the documentation for this. Uh, for this. So let's get a an incognito window for this. Let's just look at the documentation. Okay. Yeah. One thing that we've seen. Yeah. We have to to set these waypoints as read only because we're not gonna uh, and it's not read only from Odin. It's this read only community. So that the the, the burst compiler knows that we're not gonna modify that uh, well i mean our waypoint uh, native array and yeah he's gonna do stuff in there but what we want to know is this so we're gonna make a new job ah and here we, here it is so when we schedule this job here's where we're gonna pass the length okay so what what we're gonna do <laughs> yeah so as we can see in here, so we have the waypoints, but we're iterating through the waypoints, but we're not looking at the last one because in order to make this, we have to look at the current one and the next one. Hello, Cenobite um, of Sec. I think I hope I've uh, said your name right. A magical wizard from beyond. Welcome, welcome to the stream. How are you? Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, when we're gonna schedule the job, instead of uh, putting the, le the the whole length, we're gonna do length minus one. So we can do... So we can, uh, yeah, read, uh, read those two values in, in the job. And not uh, not think that we're gonna reach the end one and not have a yeah it's not gonna have a one after that. And now that I think about it, there's a lot of things that we have to carry over, which is not that bad, but yeah. Okay, let's to do this. So we're gonna need this. Um, let's put this as I, just so it's simpler. We're gonna need those lengths. And now that I think about it, I wonder if I if we should have those lengths or just calculate them uh, on the spot. I mean, actually, let's start by looking at where we're using those lengths, because we might not need them. So yeah, here we, we assign them and in recalculate cache, this is where we use them. So I don't think we're gonna, we're gonna keep them actually. Uh, the total length might be something that we need in other places. So yeah, that's something that we need, but the, the length between uh, each, um, Each segment, or the, uh, between each uh, point, um, I don't think we're gonna keep. We're gonna ju just cal uh, calculate on the fly. Yeah, I think it's gonna be much easier. Because this, actually, yeah, this is the only place where we where we need it. Oh, I see. Check out my channel. Mm. I have to, I have to work, but, uh, 
Yeah, I see you've just created your channel, so I might assume that you might be a bot. Maybe. But if you can prove to me that you're not a bot, I'm, I might check out your channel. Maybe. Okay, so getting back to this. Yeah, so let's get our code back in this panel. So yeah, so we need a language. Actually, why do we need a length? Oh, that's that's a good thing to ask. Oh, so we need a length for yeah, so for knowing how to do this. Yeah, okay. Let's put a zero in here for now. And let's create this whole thing. And just adapt it to what we have here. So we will need this step, which I'm gonna make a constant, but I'm gonna keep as a constant and just plop it in here. It's gonna be a private. Let's put a capital S on that. And it does the job. That's awesome. Let's uh, save this in the results. And we're gonna use an I in here. We will need the path radius and the root position. So those two things we're going to pass uh, from the outside. So let's do this. So we need a float three. And we're going to adapt that function. In this function, we're going to adapt it to, to what, uh, float trees instead of vector trees. So it's going to uh, work better with um... <coughs> with our burst compile code. So flow three is gonna be our uh, root position. Let's call it root position. And uh, what else we need? The path, which is gonna be a simple float. Path radius, okay. So let's add those, um, let's add them to here. So we have the root position and then we have Let's copy this. Path radius is path radius. Root position is um, root position is position, but it has this needs to have an underscore in front. Okay, so that's it. Let's use those values. So that's the root position and oh god damn it. This is the path radius. It can be made read only. Uh, I guess. Uh, no, actually we have to set this read only. Actually I don't know if I if I have to set those as read only or um no I don't think I, I need to. It's only for, for for those native containers, doesn't matter for, yeah, it doesn't matter for value types. It actually doesn't make sense to have them as read only. Okay, and let's look back a bit at this. <clears throat> yeah. I think this is all that we have to do. So let's uh, go back to our function here and yeah, let's uh, let's make a similar method, but instead of using vector three, we're gonna use float three. And yeah, include Unity Mathematics. It's gonna be a float three. Let's align everything. And yeah, there's one more thing that we, we should we should instead of using uh, uh, this uh, ma uh, the math f uh, class, we should use the, the math uh, yeah 
you should also use Unity Mathematics for uh, for those transformations. So I'm not sure if it has a uh, I don't know if this is what we want. I think this is the, the, the radiance one is what we want, but I'm not entirely sure. So let's look at the documentation, if it even has documentation. But I think this is what we want. To make it from, it returns the result of uh, converting a value from degrees to radiance. radiance. Yeah, that's that's exactly what we need. So here, instead of multiplying, we're just going to assign this. And in here, instead of using this cost function, we're going to use the cost function from the Unity Mathematics. Sin. Like this. We have to... Let's uh, do some, uh, repair some typos in here. I don't know what I should write here. Maybe this, not sure. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're gonna use this function. Let's see if, the, if our supply now uses, yeah, it uses the correct one because it has correct types, yeah. Yeah, cool. Actually, now that I think about it, this is not correct. So, yeah. Yeah, this is not correct. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, so I was thinking this job is gonna loop through all the waypoints, but we, we have, with, with this new for loop in here, Yeah, so, so I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't thought about it much before. I just thought it, yeah, it would be a good place to apply jobs and burst in here, but I, I'm not sure how to do it now because the problem is not that we have two for loops. The problem is that we have this for loop that has an arbitrary number of steps based on the length. So my plan was to execute this job with uh, with the length of uh, the number of waypoints. But we can do that because, yeah, when we want to when when we want to save the results, we don't know where to save it. So the I in here is not actually correct, or is it? No, it's not. It is not because. We would have to know how many. So 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 we could do something like i multiplied by something, some constant, and add the j. But we don't know how many steps there are for each uh, for each uh, for each segment. So actually, I don't know what to put here. I don't know. What what the index is? It should be in here. Because because what we've done in here is have this cache index and just increment it in here. So, so this is defined uh, outside of the the uh, of both for loops. And we just increment it here. So yeah, we don't, we don't, we just don't care. But and and we have the same uh, the same. Uh, um, um, what do you call it? The same approach in here because it's gonna run uh, run parallel, so we know which in in which order those indexes are gonna be executed. So we don't know where in the results array we have to store our value. Hmm. 
Now that is interesting. That is interesting. And I'm not sure I I'm not sure we can solve this though. I mean, oh, there is a way of solving it, but we could have. Uh, but that'd be weird, in a way. No, I don't think we can. I'm. We could have two jobs doing the doing this the, this those. Stuff. So have uh, one job that. Basically calculates the length of this of this array, or whatever saves the saves this j variable in an array. Because basically that's actually what uh, that's it is the j value, but it's not actually no. Okay, we still have to know uh, the from and to variables. Hmm. I mean, we could, we could have a... Yeah, I don't think we can do this with the job. I mean, not... I mean, not a single job. And this is all because this is a... Yeah, it has a, an arbitrary number of steps. Hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, no, I don't think we can solve this. And having two jobs, I think it would complicate things way too much. So, yeah, even though this looked like a good place to, to use burst and jobs, it actually isn't. I mean, it looked good at first glance, but now that I go into it, it's not actually, I don't think it's achieve. I no, for sure it's achievable, but not in the way that I've done it right here. I would have to juggle with those, with those values and try to make it some other way, but given the fact that this piece of code is not necessarily that heavy on the, on the system and it's only on a, in the editor, um, I might just not not do it. So yeah. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna scrap this and just uh, yeah move on to the next task. I might I might think about it. I I I actually no I will think about this a, a little bit more um, after the stream or next week but I don't think uh, I don't think it's doable with uh, with with jobs without having a lot of things uh, written into memory and stuff yeah I'll think more about it um, later but for now uh, yeah we're gonna scrap this which is kind of sad because I really wanted to try burst and uh, and jobs more. Okay, so let's see what we've done in here. Let's change something in this assembly definition, the spline, and those two. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of those and those two as well. Yeah, so we're gonna discard everything because everything is about this task, and we don't need it anymore. Unfortunately. Uh, 
Okay. Let's see what happened. The code is gone. Let's see if our old code still works. Looks like it does. Let's try clicking on things. Looks like this still works. Yeah. Okay. Ah, this is a bit sad. Can't play a bit with uh, with burst, but uh, yeah, it was a task uh, for. Uh, I mean, I wanted to do this refactoring, but it was a bit of a research task as well, because I was not, uh, I haven't worked a lot with uh, with jobs before. So, yeah, I still learned something. Um, let's put a comment in here. Um, so I know why that I haven't done this. Because of the Okay, so we've um, actually let's let's add this in the so this scrap task. Okay, okay. So we're gonna hello Mohan. How are you? Okay, so we're gonna continue with the uh, next task so let's see let's see a bit what we've done uh, last time to, to refresh your mind and um, then we're gonna I'm gonna explain what the nas uh, next uh, task is so last time with with some uh, work on uh, on the upgrades but I'm not I don't want to look at the code yeah here so, so we've made this um, this way of of creating new new upgrades and specifying, yeah, basic things for like name, description, icon, whatever, and this stat link, which is yeah, uh, it's a link to or yeah, a reference to to the to the to that specific statistic, which is in this case the tower health, and uh, yeah, we have it here. It's just a simple screen object that does nothing it just links two pieces of uh, pieces of code and uh, so, so we've done the, the upgrade part so what we want uh, what I want to do now is um, upgrade the health component to to have a reference to that uh, to that uh, statistic link and um, yeah whenever the game starts just uh, go to the to the upgrades manager and uh, query it for for the multiplier for, for that spe specific statistic so that it knows that okay so there are some upgrades available or uh, the, the player has bought some upgrades tell me uh, how much i should uh, increase my health by so i can uh, yeah so it uh, reflects those upgrades so that's what what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna work on the on this uh, oh, wait. on this health component. Uh, we're gonna add uh, links to the or fields for those links for the for the health. We're gonna do some more work. Uh, I, I I will uh, I think I will uh, hide this max health at uh, editor time and just leave the health. 
and yeah, we're gonna do some 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 changes to this to this component. And uh, one other thing that I have to think about is and work on uh, during this task uh, is I'm gonna use this same health component for for enemies as well, because right now right now is it, it is uh, generic in the way that. Um, yeah, it, it has nothing to do with the tower, so I can use it forever. But after I add this, uh, so so that stat link, that uh, we are going to use that. But um, the way we query the, this upgrade manager, we, we can either uh, do it in a generic way and reuse this health component for enemies as well, or with have multiple health components, uh, uh, one for for the tower and one for the enemies, because the enemies will will also have uh, multipliers for, for the health, but it's not come it's not gonna come from the upgrades manager. Uh, it's gonna come from um, let's see, yeah this this file that we're also gonna work on today, which is a wave definition asset. So this this basically defines a wave from the game and it's gonna have yeah it's gonna have a list of enemies that uh, are gonna appear in, a, in that specific wave and have the type of the enemy how many there are gonna be and for each stat or whatever the stat you're gonna choose you can add a multiplier so yeah the top is gonna ask the uh, upgrades manager for for the multiplier for that specific specific uh, stat and the enemies is gonna uh, ask the, the uh, probably the, the way manager so we'll have to do we'll probably have to do something generic in there so we can use that same component uh, for both of them or if it's not uh, if it doesn't look good uh, we might just uh, split the component in two and have them uh, um, Yeah, have them uh, do do the uh, each things uh, specifically. Okay, so let's start by by uh, actually let's start by starting the timer. No, not log work, but track time. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start uh, working on this. Can I have my, I'd like to have my, um, let's see how we can do this, how we can do this. Um, not this, but I want my, god damn it. Let's collapse this. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, so now I can have, I've done it so I can have the chat from Twitch and uh, Hack and Plan both on the screen. Okay, so yeah, so let's uh, let's look at that um, health component now and see what we can do with it. So it's in common because yeah, that's uh, because I, I I started by work uh, when I started working on it I said that that is gonna be common between those two. Yeah, we'll see if this still holds up. Okay. So so, so as I said, I would like to to not show the max health. In the in the UI, I mean we're we're still gonna have a, a max health, but we're not we're not gonna show it in the, in the UI because as we have right now, we're never gonna have um, either an enemy or or the start with uh, less health than its maximum at the beginning. So there's no reason to have both uh, um, both fields in here. So. What I'm going to do is 
have a separate field which is like the eight or health or the base health i don't know what, what i'm gonna call it and whenever that value changes it's gonna update update those two so let's do that uh, yeah so public load base health a base is base a good name yeah yeah i think base health is okay uh, yeah. anyway base health is going to be called in the in the code in the in the code is still going to be called health but yeah so we're going to have base health sure let's put it in the same tab as this one and let's do some um, let's make it look a little bit prettier so we're gonna hide it if it's in play mode because we don't we don't want to see the the base health and we're gonna hide those two if it's in editor mode also on top of this uh the health and max health in the editor i would like them to be read only so you can't change them and also 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 um this base health in the editor i wanted i wanted to be called health or actually i want it to be called the same as this whatever this is so actually i'm gonna do name a name of health even though yeah i can just write the text but yeah so now we have health and if we play the game we're gonna have health and max health um actually i'm gonna do something in here Actually, let's do something here for, um, yeah, for testing purposes. So, so I am going to do this in the end where I have hide in editor mode. Let's move this comma in here. I want to dis actually, uh, yeah, I want to disable it instead of, uh, yeah, like this, and disable it instead of hiding it and also let's just indent it so it looks better with that one that other one now copy the whole thing like this so let's see how it looks now so you should have health and then those two in here i can change the health well that is bad we should have some caps for the health Yeah, let's start by doing that. So, okay, so we'll have a min value of zero. And then we'll have this, uh, we'll have a method in here for changing the other values. Okay. Private void on base health change so what are we gonna do we're gonna nope health equals max health equals base health that's what we're gonna do move this let's make this an expression body yeah so now whenever i change the those two values should be updated as well there we go that is perfect because that's exactly what we want we want those values default to be in sync with the health that we set in the editor and then uh yeah 
and uh, use those two values in the in the game. So that that works well. Um, so I'm gonna. Now, now that I think about it, I wonder if I should just keep this as base health. I think I'm gonna keep this but no it doesn't matter how it how it's working in the in the, the yeah no no we're just gonna hide it we don't need it as I said we don't need it in the editor we don't care how it's implemented we're gonna do this so we're gonna know have the health in here which is this uh, this base health and we can do whatever we want with it the other values gonna are gonna be updated in the in the back and then when we play the game uh, those other two values are going to show up with the health and max health with the same uh, with the same value so let's put 100 back in here and one last thing we're have we're going to have to serialize this as well so this is the base health and let's see where where we're using this health i mean i actually i know where it's used it's in the file i don't know why i have to search for it but yeah so Base health is serials data dot base health. Let's put it here to be the first. Base health is base health. There you go. Now we are also serializing those values in the in the save file. Okay. 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 So the the first part of the task is done. So now we have this uh, this single point of uh, yeah, the single point where we can change the the health of the tower or the or the enemies. And now um, we're gonna add uh, that field for um, or that link for the, for the health. So public link health link, and we're gonna give him give it the same the same tab. Uh, we, we, we're not gonna put a space in there but yeah so now we have this health link I might indent it though yeah just have it because it, it's part of the health so it's gonna look better this way so so that's the the statistic so we're just gonna link it there and now we have to somehow, when the game starts, um, ask the upgrades manager to to give us uh, the 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 multiplayer for the for the for the health. Hmm. 
I wonder how we should how we should do this. So the first thing that came to mind um, for supporting both um, enemies and uh, the tower with the with the upgrades is something that I always think about, but I always forget that, uh, forget that it doesn't work. So just I was just thinking of adding. Uh, what you call it, uh, an interface in here and define, so, so we need a simple function from this. So this is what we, that's all we need from the upgrades manager or, the, or it's for the, for the health component. We need to call this method. So get multiplier for stat. We give it the, the stat link and then uh, um, and then it, it gives us back the multiplier so we know how to by by what uh, amount to, to to increase the health but i can't use an interface because unity doesn't know how to um how to serial those but now i actually i think i've just remembered something Let's try. I might have. Yeah. Ah, let's try something. Let's try something. Uh, where should we put? Let's just put it here for now. So, um, public interface. I something. Something. And it has nothing in it, but. I am gonna implement. Actually, no. Let's let's add this as a uh, as a method in here because that's exactly what we need. And I know for sure that we can't just come here and say public i something something. Let's import it. So we can't do that. Unity is not gonna show us. Uh, an input for this because it doesn't know how to serialize it. But I remember about this serial reference. I don't, uh, I'm not sure if this is something. Oh my god, that's, <clears throat> that's exactly what we need. <laughs> that is exactly what we need so now I can drag this and it's gonna and I... god damn it it can't serialize it because it's a ah, stupid that's so stupid so because that class is not actually a yeah so it, so it is a Ah, that's so silly. Yeah, because it extends the, the Unity object. It can't serialize it as a reference. It, it, if it was any other type of class, just it, or it didn't uh, extend that, that Unity class. If it's not, if it uh, a scriptable object, uh, Unity would have been fine. It. Yeah, so, so okay, so we can do this. Hmm. This is actually so stupid because it this does make it does uh, make a lot of sense. But the problem is that Unity doesn't know how you're gonna use this this interface. That's that's the problem that it has. Because it because if it would somehow know that it was a service. I mean, not a service, but a but a scriptable object that had its interface. If I could somehow specify that, it would just work and just show me an an inspector for it. But no, he doesn't know that. And this this doesn't work because I'm extending an object that they know about. It's just stupid.
Yeah, so I don't think... I mean, we could have a class instead of having something. Or, or I mean, having a, an interface here, have a class that extends service and then... Uh, yeah, have an abstract class that has this as an abstract method. You could implement it in whatever place you want. I mean, we could do it like this, but there is no... Um, There's no link between this upgrades manager and that wave manager. It's just like those are the places where the data is going to be stored, but I don't see a common place. So I don't know. The problem is I don't know what the, that that uh, base class is going to uh, be named. I think of a name that ha that makes sense to be the base for the upgrades manager and also the a uh, waves manager with 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 a with a with an interface it might be something different cuz i can say i uh i could do something like i um as i don't know it's stupid but I can do something like this. I get multiplier for stat, <laughs> and it's it, it 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 does make sense. So so it just adds some. Well, it says that this class is gonna have some functionality, but it's still derived from from our scriptable object. But I can't have the the base class be named like this. So instead of service, have something like this. This doesn't any sense and it's not gonna work if i want to add other uh, um, interfaces or, or things so it's not scalable so yeah what what we're gonna have to do i think is make different components for enemies and for the tower for for the health i mean because i i don't have a, a even, even though they're gonna look totally, I mean, not totally the same, but pretty much the same. Yeah, we'll have to have different. Uh... Hmm. I'm thinking of ways of um, yeah, making that work. Okay, I, I, I can think of how that can be done. I, I, I'm gonna try something actually. I try something uh, else. So let's get this back in here. Let's get back on our tower. I think this is gonna still shout at me that because it doesn't know about this, or maybe not. No, it's not gonna shout. So I was wondering if in this list it would show me like the types of uh, objects that I could uh, instantiate. Actually, it might show me the types, but uh, right now only the objects manager it's it's shown in here. Maybe I can. Uh, public class, uh, some class which implements this and it does something. Return float, return, return zero. Let's see if if I if I click in here if it's gonna give me. Oh yes, it does. So now this is something actually. Because now maybe I can say, okay, so here I want 
a public this something. I wonder how it's gonna deal with this. This. Yeah, now this is something I can use. So I can basically make proxies between. Uh, yeah, make proxies between this uh, the upgrades manager and the and whatever the waves manager that implements yeah that that implement this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, interface. So we're gonna have the same. Uh, the, the same method exposed but uh, each of the proxies is going to use a different thing so this is going to use the upgrades manager so it's going to call this dot uh, get multiplier for stat and uh, that's going to pass the stat link so it's going to use this and i could have another class just like this but it but for for enemies and this is something i can use it is actually sense and I might be able to apply it in a lot more places yeah and so this way I don't have to I don't have to to have multiple uh, yeah to have different classes for 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 the tower health and the, the enemy's health okay we can work with this this is actually doable and then you can yeah you can again change this which is nice so you're not stuck with this and then i can select this right what if i click this it's gonna remove that but that's that's okay because you know, whatever uh let's try to do something so i assume this is gonna be saved but just to be sure <coughs> let's um Let's start by no. Let's let's go to a new scene, and then just load back this scene. See if it's still there. So that's still there. Let's close Unity. Start again Unity. I just want to make sure that it's gonna, not gonna somehow freak out uh, afterwards. I don't want to port into it and then it and then uh, find out it's not actually gonna work. Yeah. Okay. So this is still here. I mean, it works as Unity says it's work. It so. But that's awesome. Okay. So now we can use this, which is actually quite nice. Now we have to make this prettier. And now where we should put those actually. Um. I might put them in, 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 in here in, in the health data component. Because it, it is for the, for the health, not the health or the health data. No, some, somewhere in here next to the health data actually. Because I'm gonna need, uh, no, I'm gonna, I will need it in the health, but I'm, I'm gonna get it through the health data. Yeah, no, I'm gonna put them in the health data everything in here okay so this is not something that we need so so it doesn't have to extend that because that's that's why we have this proxy for uh shit uh yeah but in here we're gonna have i get multiplayer for stat and we're gonna have two classes that um uh, Upgrades manager proxy and whatever the waves manager proxy, but we don't have that yet. Let's make this uh, an expression body because it looks much better. Uh, I don't want to make this private. No thanks. And 
and yeah, this is still gonna be yeah. Get multiplayer for stat. And let's add this to let's change those. Yeah, like this. There we go. So now for the tower. Okay, compile again. So now here we can use this this proxy and then we can assign the upgrades manager. There we go. I just call it a proxy. And it's gonna lose the reference to that, so we have to assign it again, which is not a big loss. Okay. This is gonna be so annoying because those I mean this one is not aligned with the with the others. That looks so ugly. There are like, I don't know, two, three pixels. But it's ugly. Okay, so we have this. So, we, so we've made this uh, general way of of uh, getting the multiplier, and now we have to we have to use it. So in the health component. Whenever the game starts, we have to, to use that. So I wonder how we should do that. Or actually not... Hmm. Yeah, so yeah, as I said, we have to, we have to, to look, to get the multiplier and just apply it to the, to the health. And I was thinking at, uh, but yeah, I can do that externally. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's see how we can do that. So no, yeah, in the in this uh, in the in the load phase, I guess before everything, we'll have to um, the max health is gonna be the base health times the get multiplier whatever. And this and the stat link is um, t dot health link. Actually, it doesn't make sense to have a link in the name health stat. Add that attribute. We're gonna have the same for health. Yeah, and actually, let's be let's play nice and just. Uh, this no, this is a var, and this is a health multiplier. Ah, oh, come on! God damn it! Okay, but now we have a problem here because it's gonna work. Or well, actually, no. Let Let's try it. Let's try it, and then we'll see what the problem is actually. Um, let's see. Yeah, so we have a 100 health. Let's start a game, and we still have 100. Actually, let's let's uh, hide those. To we don't have the reference anymore. Pom pom pom. 
that reference is gone. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> that is a problem. Maybe I haven't saved the scene or what? Yeah, I probably haven't saved the scene. Okay, so we still get it. Good. Okay, so we have 100 health. That's amazing. Let's give me some... Um, how do I give myself some... Some levels. Um, I don't know how to give myself some levels. Uh, let's get to this tab maybe? Yeah. So I want tower health. I want to give myself level one, sure. Add this. So I have level one tower. Let's upgrade this. And it's gonna give me a twenty percent increase uh, in the in in health. Let's uh, let's select the tower. So we have one hundred. Let's play the game. We should have. We should have had 120, but we don't. What? Um, maybe maybe the the data is cleared. Yeah, so I don't know why data is clear though. Because the dictionary is not serialized; it's just found in the editor. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I can give myself uh, levels to test this. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've tested this uh, last time, so it should be fine. But there is a problem that we have in here, so so we don't make, the, we don't make a difference between uh, uh, starting the game from yeah from the beginning let's say and uh, loading the game so this is uh, yeah this is not something that we see in here so um, yeah we'll have to take this into consideration somehow most uh, the, the the most important thing is this one so 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 the health uh, if, if we just loaded the game we don't want to um, reset the player's health to to, to maximum uh, we want to update it only if um, if it's the first time uh, he plays or he starts the game in which case actually yeah no no he, he we, we need to apply the upgrades because the upgrades are um, uh, the, the player is gonna keep uh, Keep keep his upgrades even though he tries to play uh, play again. Yeah, yeah, because the the, the upgrades are are kept um, even though you 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 die at a certain point in the game. You're gonna keep your your upgrades the next time you you start playing. Yeah, so we have to do this, but only if it's at the beginning of the game, which means. that we need a way of knowing if it's the start of the game or not a simple way of doing it is just checking if the the health is equal to the max health a better way of doing it is uh, adding a boolean to our health data that uh, says yeah if it's uh, if the component is initialized or not and we we're gonna save that in the save file and if it's if the component is not initialized we're gonna we're gonna do this line of code two so so we're gonna do this otherwise if it's if it's if the component was initialized previously we're not gonna do this and we're gonna keep our health as is And I think that's the better solution. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the better solution for this. Uh, 
Okay, so let's try let's try doing that. What is he trying to say? He's never assigned, but it is assigned. You just don't know what I'm talking about. This this is assigned. Whatever. Okay, let's start by that. Okay, so public bool any Let's add it as the first thing in our class. Public bool initialized equals false. We are not, or actually, no, we are going to add it to the um. We are gonna do add it to the inspector, but it's gonna be read only. It's, it should be false by default. Okay. Let's add it to this thing. Initialize equals initialized and here as well. And now we can use it. So in load phase, we're gonna do this line of code. So if dot initialized, or maybe if it's not initial initialized, we're gonna do this line of code. Uh, the max health we're gonna do always, and then the dot initialized we're gonna set it to, to true. So we know for next time that we have to do it. Actually, makes much more sense to do it in here. Okay. Again, we can't test it because I can't set. Uh, I can't have a. I can set a, an upgrade by default to have a value. But no, actually, I can do something. So in our upgrades manager, I think, let's see, get level for upgrade. Let's just put a one in here. So if I, if it doesn't find it in the, in the, um, in the dictionary, it's, it's just going to give me a level of one. So now we should get a, a, the health of 120. Yeah, here we go. So, so we have 120. It is initialized, and uh, uh, let's see. If I go to the tower or the health, let's take some damage. Let's take 25 damage, or yeah, 25. You get the health. There we go. And now let's save the game. So we've saved the game. Can, yeah, let's see. Let's look at the. What actually? No, I can't look at the this version because it's ugly. But if we try to look through here a bit, um, we will see. Yeah, here. So here is the max health, and then we have the health. The base health is 100, and the initialized flag is true. So now. Um, when we play again, it should uh, it should uh, load the the save file, but uh, but uh, but our health should still be, yeah, 95, and the max health should be 100, even though the base health is one, uh, or uh, the, the 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 max health is one 120, even though the health is 100 because the the multiplier was applied. Okay, so this works. This actually. Works. I think I'm gonna hide those when when we're in runtime because it doesn't make any sense to, to show them. You don't need them. So let's try that, or let's do that. I mean, 
Okay, so this is the health link. Uh, this we should remove that. And uh, re hide in editor, no, hide in play mode. Hide in play mode, hide in play mode. Those two. So let's see what, what happens. It should stay the same in this view. But when we press play, we're just gonna get, yeah, the health and the max health. Nice. Let's click the, the save file so we don't get the weird results. Cool, so actually we've finished this uh, this task. Because now when we start we get... Uh, yeah, yeah we have this... Uh, uh, we, we, we are, we are applying the multiplayer. We have this proxy for using the, the same component for both the tower and the enemies. Yeah, uh, let's uh, change this back to a zero. And let's test that it does what it's supposed to do. So when we play, it should still be 100. Yes, it is. Cool. This is cool. Um, let's see what is this. Those are my messages. Yeah. Yeah. So we've actually finished this task. This is actually let's do some some review of what we've changed. So whatever. I don't care about that. I don't care about actually what what has changed on here. Ah, we've added the cost. Even though this is not the I think I think we have saved the, the asset, that's why we have it in here. So this is the serialized, deserialized stuff. This is whatever, everything that we've added. The base health, uh, this... Actually, now that I think about it, this doesn't make sense anymore. Because we are uh, overwriting the values at runtime anyway. Actually, uh, where is it? Here. We're not gonna do this. Because it doesn't matter. It's not gonna help. In any way. Okay. Okay. Let's continue reviewing the code. Uh, not this file, but this file. Yeah, so we've added some read-only to stuff. Actually, now that I think about it, why do I have to specify? Because we have this in here, right? I'm quite sure of it. Yeah. Remove this. Remove this. Remove this. Much better. Yes, reload the file, please. We have the proxy. And let's look at this. This should be, yeah, that uh, piece of code from up top. Cool. Yeah, so, so we're done with this task. Uh, let's commit everything. Let's do a save just to be sure that there's nothing. Yeah, let's just go. Awesome. So let's mark this as complete. And now that I've done that, my task is still. Um, Why does it say that it's still... Let's do a refresh. It says that it's still locked. Okay. Okay, so now one of the tasks has been uh, has been unlocked. This is the enemy definition asset. 
so this is what we're gonna work next on so so we we, we looked a bit at this um, last time but uh, yeah I was not sure about uh, how to do it actually but I've since uh, I've I've, I've uh, started thinking about this uh, since then where's my car oh there it is and actually the yeah so let's see where it is where are our enemies god damn it I, that was bad where's the enemy oh I just passed so the only thing an enemy will have, or at least on the on the definition file, is just the name. And even that, I don't know if we're gonna keep, because I don't know where we're gonna uh, show the the name of the enemy. But, um, but yeah, we uh, this uh, this enemy definition, I think it's is gonna be used for linking linking different parts of the game. Um, and now that I think about it, I might just be able to to use the, the link uh, the link object for that. But uh, yeah, we might we might need to add more things on 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 the animation later. So so previously, uh, quick uh, uh, the name I had uh, the stats of the enemy, whatever that that meant. So yeah, it doesn't it doesn't actually make sense. Um. So, so the, the the statistics of the the enemy are gonna be on the actual prefab, like we have for the tower. So, so the tower has this health component that knows about the the health of the tower. So, the same is gonna be for the for the enemies. They they're gonna have the same component. So, and yeah, there are gonna be multiple uh, multiple components of uh, that gonna hold that gonna that's gonna hold the uh, Whole different uh, statistics like damage, money, speed, and uh, other special uh, stats. And uh, yeah, the only thing that remains for the enemy definition is the name. So yeah, this is gonna be easy to make because yeah, it's uh, it's just a scriptable object with a name on it, the name field. So let's do this uh, real quick on to more interesting stuff okay so enemies runtime and let's make this enemy definition it's gonna be a scriptable object and we're gonna have Actually, should it be a public node? It should be a private private string name, which is a serialized field, and we're gonna have a public string name name, and also let's create. Uh, create asset menu, um, menu name, project tower slash uh, enemy slash enemy, enemy definition, enemy definition. Okay, so let's look at it. Actually, first of all, let's create, yeah. Let's go here, let's create a folder, enemies, and I actually, I'm, I don't think I'm going to keep them here. No, actually, no, I'm not going to keep them here. And also those, I might just move from here. Uh, so let's go to objects and let's make, let's make an enemies folder here. Let's move our dummy enemy in here and let's create a definition for our dummy enemy. Uh, so project enemy enemy definition dummy and definition uh, too many spaces in here dummy 
Let's uh, remove that script from there because it looks ugly. So hide mono script. Awesome. Yeah, so actually this is this is it. This is all we have for this task. Because now now we're gonna use this for. Um, yeah, for, for the for the next task, which is the wave definition. So we just needed this class for for being able to, 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 to create that to wave definition. Okay. Yeah, actually that's it. So let's let's commit this. Um, yeah, that looks that looks fine actually. I thought that there were um, too many, too many files, but that's that, uh, this is actually correct. So this is a feature, a short and small feature, but it's gonna help us. So let's log the work. Let's mark it as done, and yeah, that committed. Okay, now we can work on the bigger, the big, a uh, 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 much bigger task, which is the wave definition. I mean, it's not bigger, but it's way bigger than than the one. So as we've done for for upgrades, we're gonna have a definition asset for waves, and what this is gonna have is, yeah, it's gonna have information about the the enemies that are, that are gonna be spawned during that that um, wave so yeah okay so let's do this let's see how we can do this first of all let's start a timer so I don't forget okay Let's reset everything. Let's make yeah. Now let's make some some uh, new folders. So let's call this waves. Let's add a runtime folder and let's create a class in here. So wave definition, which is gonna be a scoopable object. And let's so this is the the namespace. And now one thing that we have to do because this is a new folder, we have to add it to the to the assembly definition so we can have access to to other stuff from the from the project. So where is it? Uh, waves runtime. Let's create an assembly definition reference, which has this name. And in the expector, we are gonna reference the runtime uh, or the project uh, project our runtime assembly definition. Let's apply this. And now uh, this script is gonna be built into this assembly. And now we're gonna have access to everything that assembly uh, has. Okay, so from the start, I know we are going to need an array of things. Um, I don't know what those things are going to be named, but um, yeah. So, so, I'm, so I'm thinking if we should, how we should expose this information to to whatever, whatever tries to to do stuff with it. Let's 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 make it public for now. 
and we'll see later. So, so we'll need a data type. Um, public class wave step, maybe. We're gonna have an array of wave steps. Let's call it steps. Uh, actually, steps with without an underscore in front of it. And that's kind of it. Actually, no. Um, no, let's make this a private. And the serialized field, let's... No, let's uh, rename this. Public. Um, Yeah, this is. I think this is much better. Um, let's test this. Uh, test whatever. Okay, that's that's what I what I wanted to know if it has a count. Yeah. So so this is a this is a good way of exposing things. Okay. Actually, I hope it's working. Actually, let's try it. Um, how can we do? It? No, let's first. Uh, uh, we're gonna test it later. So let's first uh, declare some things in the wave step. Let's see what what does it tell us. It's never instantiated. It's gonna be instantiated. Don't worry. Wait. Ah, yeah, that's that's why it's telling us that because I haven't told uh, told him that it this class is serializable, so he doesn't know that it is gonna do stuff with it. Okay, so let's start by doing public enemy definition enemy. Now I'm gonna do those uh, also as but yeah. Nope. So we have the enemy. We will need an int, which is the count. So how many enemies? And let's also add a uh, mean value of one. So at least one enemy of this type. We can also edit here, and then I have the stats uh, stats multiplier, which I don't know how we're gonna save, but for now let's just keep it like this. So now we can work with this. Uh, actually, no. Uh, one last thing: create asset menu, menu name, project. Power slash wave slash this. Create folder waves. Create project tower waves wave definition. Let's create a step. So we want a dummy enemy and we want, yeah, this many dummy enemies to spawn. Um, now, let's try to, so let's make this public. Have the enemy. Let's do the same for the count. Public count. Uh, bit. I would void test. 
Let's put a button on this. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, so let's go through all the steps. Um, and let's just uh, log the, uh, I don't know, the name of the enemy. Let me kill Steam. Okay, so let's see what it does. Yep, we have dummy in here. One last thing I want to uh, not con um, is it this is not JavaScript. Let's do this. And if this uh, also works, yeah, yeah. So we're good with this uh, with this data type. I mean, I could, I can return it as as, a, as an array. Doesn't really matter. Well, actually, no, it does matter because. Um, no, yeah, yeah, no, it, it totally matters. Let me see if uh, this is gonna. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't stop me from assigning values to to this, which is actually the whole thing. That, yeah. This this is exactly what I wanted to to prevent. So yeah, I might have to do something else here but i don't think i want to so no oh come on as it only so that's what i would have to do Let's look at how this, uh, or what the, what does this class do? Come on, this taking so much. Okay, so It gets an eye list, which is okay. We have a we have an array. It's the count of that. It gets an index if we want to, but it doesn't have a setter for the index, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it has only a getter in here. So, so it still works with the with the original. Uh, yeah, with the original thing with uh... Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay to use, I guess. I was thinking maybe it was doing something like uh uh copying the the contents of the of the array into something else. But it uh it uses the same uh, the same structure you provide and it and just uh wraps it. So that's nice. But it it still doesn't. Uh... Let's see if it, if if at the at runtime it uh, throws an error for this. It doesn't throw an error for this. This is quite concerning. Let's remove this. Uh... Uh, it still doesn't doesn't say anything. I wanna override this. But that's the whole. Uh... Oh, uh, it lost the reference to that. Why? Okay, that's weird. I don't know why it lost the reference. Ah, because I changed the definition of this. That 
that it doesn't make because the count is uh, is also different. Yeah. So. This... Yeah. It lets me assign to this, which is not cool. Oh, it didn't. It hasn't lost the the. Oh my god. Hasn't lost the. Reference to it. I just assigned something to it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why this doesn't work. It should do exactly what I what I what I expected it to do. So I gave it something and it just uh, doesn't let me uh, assign anything to it. So I'm not sure why why does it let me to do. There we go. We can get stuff, but if we want to set stuff, it says that it's not supported, which is exactly exactly that we can't add maybe it wants to be a um, what do you call it it wants to be a instead of a instead of an array but that would be weird i mean we could try with this but i i doubt it is gonna do something else but let's see it doesn't even accept the list Oh no, it, it cannot infer something, never mind. But yeah, no, so it expects a... Yeah, no, it, it expects a... An array here. I mean, I could do a, a, a... I could create this myself if I want to. And actually, yeah, that's, that's, that's another problem. Um... I'm gonna create a new read-only collection every time I access the steps. I mean, which is not cool. Yeah, we're gonna stick with uh, just returning an array and just know that we don't or we should ever change the values. Okay, let's go back. This being an array, that obviously is not a count, that's a length. And we should never do that. So let's see what, what happens here. Yeah, let's assign those back. Test. Yeah, we, we still get the data. That's exactly what we wanted. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, uh, let's keep this, uh, this test method because we're, we're maybe gonna use it uh, later. Yeah, so now the other thing that we have to do is make it so we can specify the the stats multiplier for for the enemies. So let's see that uh, in this wave we want uh, our dummy enemies to have twice the health as the as the regular um, as the regular um, yeah the regular dummy enemy. So we should be able to, to specify that. Because we're going to have the same, we're going to re repeat the same enemies, but we're going to make them uh, increasing, increasingly more powerful as the as you uh, go through the waves. Yeah, so we so we will need a list for this. Or whatever an array. And we're gonna need another another class. Wave step multiplier or something like that. We're gonna have an array of those. 
multiple uh no this uh, this has to be private a small image here and serialize field and public um link which is going to be the stat and public float multiplier which is going to have a mean value of 0 and also we're going to do the same thing we've done for the what was it the upgrades in the upgrade definition this one actually let's put this here let's copy this. let's add it in here and have this same uh, suffix Just make a helper function for this, so we don't have to write it every time, and just change it from this. Okay. Let's see. It doesn't make sense to have the tower health here, but yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Let's add some uh, some properties in here to make, it, to make this pop more. Uh, this multiplier should be one by default. Uh, this is required. Count is one by default. We don't need this. Okay. And I think I'm gonna do one more thing in here. So actually, no, it doesn't make sense because we can't see. Is, um dictionaries no um I mean I might just add it so I can have it but actually just looking through it might be just uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep it as yeah, so what what I was thinking is um and actually I wasn't I, I had to add in here. Um so I was thinking of uh whenever we would want to get the multipliers for the for the enemy we would have to look through to this array for to to search for that uh, for that stat and um, yeah i was thinking um um yeah i was thinking of uh, of transforming this into a dictionary so that uh, um, the lookup time is uh, is uh, um, O of one instead of uh, uh, yeah O of n. So it would just uh, yeah the the lookup the lookup should be to, to to make the lookup faster. But this uh, this this array is not gonna have a lot of things in it. So maybe we're gonna have, I mean no I I know the 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 max number of things that we're gonna have in it. So it's like one, two, three, four, a minimum of four, maybe five for for one type of for one type of enemy. So just going over five items in an array is not gonna kill our processor. So so yeah, the dictionary might be 
overkill for this. And also a problem that, the, the, at least in Unity, the, 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 the dictionary has is that uh, it has some overhead when you create. So having a lot of dictionaries create at runtime might not be good for the frame rate. You know, you can it in a smart way and just uh, make them in different frames or something. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's worth the hassle. So we're just gonna keep it as a as a list, and we're gonna just gonna loop through it in search of our um, of our multiplier. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, renaming this steps to to just enemies. So I was thinking that uh, using by using steps, uh, it would be something like you could define uh, multiple. Uh, yeah, I could have the same the same enemy appear twice, but just yeah, have the dummy enemy first, then have another enemy, then the dummy enemy enemy could appear again. But I think that's that's too overkill for a wave. Because you're anyway you're gonna have multiple um, uh, multiple um, what do you call them multiple lanes so you might I think you're gonna just gonna go through the enemies and just throw them not all at once but just, uh, use from every every pool every everything that you've defined is this, uh, this big list and just throw them on all on, on all lanes so I like having this in a like in have an order for this uh, uh, matters so I'm just gonna rename this from steps to um, to enemies or something. There we go. Let's remove the monoscript and we're gonna remove the test, uh, the test button also. Yeah, I think this is it. I think I don't think there's anything else that uh, we have to add to this. This is oh yeah, one one thing. Actually, first let's clean up a bit. Uh, let's move this to to a common place. So let's try to add it to tails in here maybe. And um. Yeah, let's make a let's make this a static class public static string Ooh. 
percent, let's say float percent, and let's just do it like this. Uh, no, not percent. No, this is multiplier. Multiplier. There we go. So it's having that. Um, multiplier it is multiplier to percentage of multiplier. And we can do the same in the wave definition. So now we can, we, we have a, a single place where we can change the, how this looks in the editor. So if I want to do decimal places here, I can just add there and it's going to be changed in the, in the other place too, but I'm just going to keep it at one in here. Nice. I'm sure there's a way of writing this uh, differently, so you, so you don't get the zero at the end. Uh, that just bothers me a bit. Um, C sharp uh, string number formatting. Well. That this this is what we're looking for. No fixed point. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that that was a thing. Um, but apparently not. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I I mean, it looks good uh, either way. So we're just going to keep it at, uh, keep it like this. Let's do some uh, some review of what we've changed. It's quite a bit. So upgrade definition. Let's look at it. We just added this. That's awesome. The utils. We just looked at it. Some new folders. Some new references. Wave definition. Let's just read through it and see if it's something that we've missed. So that multiplier whatever. Step, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we have a, a step here. We have to move that, I mean, uh, rename it. So, but I, I don't know how to call it. Wave enemy definition. With a capital D and wave enemy. Yeah, sure. Wave enemy. Let's reload this. We have the enemy the count, and then we expose the array of enemies in here. That looks fine. Wave definition waves. It's a folder, and the wave definition asset. We don't have to look at that. 
yeah let's save let's start the stop the timer in here and get the name of the task and just commit this so this is a feature with definition asset let's publish this Oh, come on, you know you can do it. I knew it. Okay, let's mark this task as done. Okay, so the next thing that I that I have in the list, I'm not sure if I want to do it now, but uh, the next thing, even though it's going to unlock a lot of things. So what we've done right now is, uh, what is it? Yeah, so we've done the wave definition asset. And now we can do the waves manager. Yeah, so basically that's kind of what it does. So it keeps all the available things in a big list. Actually, yeah, that's kind of what it does. Um, yeah, yeah. We might just keep it. Uh, I mean, uh, not keep, it, but uh, do it. Uh, do it right now. But then again, actually, it's not correct because we don't want the, the all the waves. No, it's not modeled correctly. So let's make this uh, um, full screen. So actually. Uh, where is it? Oh, do we have that? Have I just removed it? No. Yeah, yeah. I think we've uh, done. Uh... Yeah, we haven't modeled this correctly. So, so this waves manager, yeah, it doesn't make sense because. We have to group waves into levels, which is this, this level definition asset, which has a list of waves. This allowed enemies is, it doesn't make sense anymore. And actually I'm gonna just remove it because the, the enemies are saved in the waves. That's the whole thing that the waves does uh, or the waves do. Uh, ways to complete for, yeah, and this uh, is just a question that I have, but uh, yeah, I have to 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 ask. I'm not sure if this is uh, true or not. But yeah, actually, that or uh, this waves manager doesn't make sense. This wave definition should be uh, linked to this uh, one, the wave manager. I mean, actually, not quite linked to that. This is not actually no. It's not actually linked. But if I if I can just uh, link it to this the level definition, yeah. This looks more like it. And this, um, and I delete connection, yeah. And now this, uh, waves management. Oh, shit. I'm just gonna remove it because it doesn't make sense anymore. This wave indicator actually it's linked to the to the actual wave manager. So this this wave manager is gonna know yeah so knows everything about the current wave and sends info about the wave to other managers. It has the countdown uh, for when to start the next wave. But this one this one doesn't make any sense. So we're just gonna remove it. And now I have to work on this actually. I haven't. I've, I've 
completely forgot about levels. I haven't uh, defined part of the, or yeah, not not uh, that, that well. I still have questions for this. But yeah, so this is let's mark this done because this is done. What else have we done? Haven't done anything for weapons. Enemy definition. This is done. So let's it is done. God damn it. We've done this. And this wave manager, yeah, uh, just add a dependency on the level. Or we're gonna have a, yeah, let's say level definition. Let's just make this line just go out, go out there, so it doesn't interfere with anything in here. And let's change the color for this to, I don't know, this lilac. Ah, but it clashes with the other one. Damn it. Uh, let's change this one because there's less clutter in here. Change this to um, green. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So now this uh, waves manager doesn't make uh, doesn't make sense. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna delete it. Let's see what happened to this. So this got uh, the the dependency for this got removed. But we can do this because uh, we want to think about the levels. So and this game manager depends on the on the wave manager. So those two I'm gonna just send them to the backlog. So I think we're gonna end the the stream by making the camera controller, which is gonna yeah, we're gonna break a bit from from all the code that we've done and we're gonna look at the game a bit more. So no more uh, no more uh, data modeling. Uh, we're gonna do some uh, interactive stuff. And let me get my controller actually, because we have to test with the controller as well. So I have my controller. Okay, so let's so let's start working on this, and we're gonna end the stream with this this uh, with this task. This should uh, this should uh, um, yeah work out great. Uh, should, we should be able to do this uh, quite easily. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. Um, I think I'm gonna make a new folder for for the camera. So camera runtime camera controller is gonna be a mono behavior ESS dot camera at runtime let's add the assembly reference in here runtime apply Okay, so what we're gonna work with is the controls manager that I've um, that I've made uh, off stream since last time. Yeah, so let's start. Let's look at the camera. Let's see where our camera is, and let's just work with it. So yeah, so this is the camera. Let's add our component. Uh, camera controller yeah so the first 
thing that we need is a reference to our controls manager. So let's do that. Controls manager. Uh, let's import this from wherever it is. And let's hide the hide the monoscript. Awesome. Controls manager. Yeah, so now it doesn't do anything. Let's get also a reference to the camera. Oh, interesting. Why does it why does it have to do that? Uh yeah, it has, uh, yeah, because uh, we have camera in here. That's why it needs it's in the front. Okay, so we have the controls, we have the camera. We will also need what do we need? We will also need the hmm. Um let's think about it. The global tower data. Global tower data. So from the uh, the global tower data, we're gonna need probably the. I mean, for sure the radius. And we're gonna add something to the radius. Um, and also a uh, module height we're gonna need. Oh, we're gonna need a lot of things actually. A lot, a lot of things. Yeah, so let's start with this because I think we have enough uh, enough stuff in here to, to work with. So... Uh, control, so controls, manager... Okay, and yeah, let's add that um, offset. Uh, offset. So, uh, how uh, was the distance from the tower? Uh, offset uh, equals zero uh, zero f, and let's realize this as well. And let's see how do we want to do this. So we're gonna go on start, I guess. Controls manager dot uh, camera actions dot move dot performed and let's make a on move this is a context and um I don't know var direction equals ctx dot read value vector two and for now let's just uh or uh, let's just log this so we can see that it uh, that it works so dear dot i mean just dear actually or whatever dear to uh, dot to Yeah. Let's play. There we go. When I press on uh, on the key, so I, now I press on D, I get a one on the X. When I press on A, I get a minus one. If I go, yeah. If I go on diagonals, I get the correct values. I mean, uh, actually, the the values on here are capped, so it's not actually zero uh, zero point seven. It's uh, is a, is a much bigger number. Um, but let's try it with the controller as well. There we go. We have much more granular granular values with the controller, but I can still use the WASD. And let's uh, let's also try um, 
that other thing that I've added. So on the, or no, what was it called? Current device change. Um, on device change, device, device. Let's log the device. Um, And one other thing that we have to do, just don't forget about it. When we destroy this, we have to clean up after ourselves. Even though I've reset those, you know, so when I do when I do reset in the in the cam in the controls um, manager, I do dispose of the, the the previous controls and I reset the event. Still. Uh, I think it's still a good practice to to do this. Okay, so let's uh, um, compile this and see what it does. So now we're playing. Uh, by default, I don't get uh, the, the 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 device. When I change now, I'm gonna use the the gamepad. There we go. Current device gamepad. Now I'm gonna get back to my get my back to my keyboard and mouse and that's what I get so now I can uh, I can react to whenever the user changes the, the device it's using and do something on the screen or yeah whatever um, yeah so let's uh, let's start using the data start using the data There's okay, so yeah, we're gonna save the no, 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 we're gonna save the direction in which we're moving in the field, and actually, yeah, let's just do it like that, just save that, let's make this. Like this, I'm gonna keep the on device here because I might use it uh, later for displaying something on the screen or I don't know. And now, um, yeah, one one other thing I want to do is um, cancel. Yeah, so on move. And so when the when the user stops uh, pressing the, the the button on the on the on the keyboard, I want this to I want the the, the direction to be reset. This is context. Yeah. And let's also uh, remove the listener. And now we can uh, do an update in here. And now that I think about it, I can make this uh, instead of being a, a simple mono behavior, I can make it a not a lifecycle component. What do I have to implement? Load phase. I'm not going to do anything in the load phase. So complete everything for me, please. But what I'm going to do is... Actually... No, I don't need... Actually, no, I don't need the, I don't need the lifecycle component. I can just do it uh, myself. Yeah, no, I can I can just do it in here, but I need a reference to the lifecycle service. 
so I I, I don't want to um, uh, I don't want to be able to move um, when we're not playing the game. So if is playing and not in front. So if we're not playing, just uh, return. So don't do anything. Otherwise, let's just log the the direction. And uh, let's get back to our camera and assign this life cycle service because that's needed. Actually, let's uh, let's assign everything just because uh, we're here. Let's assign a camera. Let's put an F set of 20 meters from the tower. Yeah, so we get a value whenever we let go. So I'm, now I'm using the, the controller. So whenever I let go of the controller, it's going to uh, go back to zero. And the same thing is happening with the with the keyboard. When I let go of the of a, of a key, the value is reset to zero. That's that's awesome. So that's exactly what we what we want. Okay, so now let's see how we can do this. So we have a direction and we're also going to have we're going to have an angle. We're going to use the same thing we're using for other parts of the game. So we're going to have an angle and a height. And yeah. The angle, we're going to add the direction dot x component. Or actually, let's, uh, uh, yeah. Let's add this and then mod it by. Um, mod it by 360. So it just keeps it in the. Yeah, so it doesn't go off uh, to, a, to a huge number if you just uh, go around the tower. And then the height component, yeah, this is simple as, or at least for now, simple as uh, adding the, the Y component. And now, um, the trans form dot position now we need both the position we're gonna set both the position and the rotation so set position and rotation so the the first is the position actually let's define it here bar position is gonna be a new vector no not not a vector tree we use the um, tower utils is it here yeah weapon to position so what's the root position? Um, what's the root position? Uh, wait. Uh, that's zero, no? I think that's yeah. So this is our our root. I have to change that path radius because it doesn't make sense. But uh, what the path path radius is gonna be is uh, the global tower data uh, radius plus our offset. Uh, offset the third per parameter is what because I can see it um, is the angle so let's add the angle and the fourth is the height so this is the position and we also need um, the rotation Um, 
on look rotation. So forward. I think it's gonna be minus position. Vector three vector three dot up is gonna be our up direction. And let's just add a rotation in here. And no, we actually need um Yeah, let's make uh no. Let's add um new vector three. So minus position dot x y is gonna be zero and minus position dot z look in a straight direction so that's gonna be the direction then up yeah and I think that's that's it let's see if it works so now we should be able to uh, hmm, go around the tower there we go I mean we have to add some some speed to this or some trolls but uh, yeah we can go up the tower we can go down the tower we can go around the tower. I might just have to make this uh, instead of uh, a stick. Uh, I might just have to make this like uh, behave more like a D-pad when you when you're on a controller. Yeah, uh, we don't have uh, a lot of references. Uh, actually, let's put a let's put the game on pause. Ah, if I put it on pause, I can't change stuff. So we don't have any any trade pieces because those, uh, yeah, we kind of needed those trade pieces because those have the the things attached to them. So let's see if it. There we go. So yeah, can go left or right, and then we can go up and down. You obviously need to. Um, uh, well, not somehow, but uh, have uh, uh, yeah, different speeds for those and be able to change them because you're, you're going up and down way too fast uh, right now and uh, left or right, it's, it's way, way, way slow but yeah, yeah, this is this is actually nice Let's uh, get closer. Let's put a let's put a ten in here. Yeah. Let's get rid of the gizmos. There we go. Yeah. So now we can look. Uh, you can look uh, at the tower. You can go around it. And that's a huge tower. Yeah. You don't have any references to where you are or how you're moving, but uh, yeah, that's why. We need those uh, straight modules because it because they have uh, stationary stuff on them. But yeah, it works. We will have to make make it a little bit prettier, but uh, yeah. So it does the job, and it works uh, good with a controller as well. But yeah, as I said, I have to make it uh, behave, uh, even though you're using the joystick. I think uh, to make it uh, behave like a D-pad, because right now you can't really go to the left. You either go a bit up a bit or a bit down uh, when you're trying to go left or right. So let's try to do that. And also, uh, let's also add the D-pad maybe to to this. Or actually, no, no, maybe we're gonna use the D-pad for something else. Yeah. No, let, let's just keep the uh, the left stick. But anyway, let's go to where is it? Controls, this, and here instead of stick, I'm gonna choose the pad. So I think by doing this, we are not gonna have those types of values when we use the stick. We're gonna have the same values 
uh, as if we had a, a deep. I think I think that's what unit is gonna do for us. Or not? Nope. They don't do that. The straight piece? Yes. No, they don't do that for us. That's kind of sad. I thought that was gonna do it, but uh, I guess not. I might just have to add a, uh, a processor for this, or actually not for this, but for the left stick. I might have to make a processor. So, so I transform the values that it gets uh, to, yeah, I just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, keep it, uh, yeah, make it behave like a D-pad, basically. I'll have to look uh, into how, how I can make processors. I think I've done them for, for the Equinox sound, but I don't remember how. I have to extend some class for it, but uh, yeah. What is this? Oh, hello. <laughs> okay. Um... Actually, let's let's see how we can do that, and we're gonna end the stream with this. So, let's um, let's look into this. Write in custom processor. There we go. This is what we want. Camera controller, D pad, processor. So I have to extend this. And in here, I have to change the value somehow. For now, we're just gonna return the value as is, just to make sure that it works as we, we wanted it to work. And let's uh, do this boilerplate code that they want us to do. So I need the... Uh, all this uh, boilerplate. This looks ugly. This looks ugly. Let's. There we go. So this is for yeah for registering this uh, processor so they know about it. And now what I can do, uh, I can just go into the game and now it's gonna appear in this list uh, or not. What? I thought. Oh yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I said it's a float, but it's not a float. This is actually a vector too. So I lied. There we go. So now it should appear here because uh, this. Uh, so I I chose a, a binding that is a vector too. There we go. D pad. So. Yeah, yeah. Let's try. It. Uh, let's try and see if this. Uh, I mean, should work as expected. Let's try to play this. On. Okay. So I can still move, and it moves as, as before, because yeah, I haven't changed the value. But now, yeah, we have to. To somehow transform this value. Hmm. Wonder what's was the easiest way I can do this. Uh, uh Yeah, so basically we have to to cap this to to basically eight values, the same as 
Yeah, the same as a D-pad. So let's get paint in here. So let's say this is our stick. So we'll have. But I mean that's that's ugly. Yeah. So the so the vet to be somewhere around the circle, but we only want those uh, those eight values. So I think the the easiest way I I can do is by transforming the value to a to an angle. Uh, do stuff with the angle and then transform it back into a direction. I think that's that's how we can do it. Yeah, I think I think that's the correct way of. But actually, no, I can do it with. Uh, no, I can do it with. Uh... I can do it with uh, just math and just some ifs in here. No, no, let's just do it with, do it with, uh, with angles. Okay, so. Uh, we need, what do we need? We need that on two. Value that y, value that x. So we get the angle. It's gonna give us the, uh, the angle in radians, which I hate. So let's multiply this by a rad to Radians to degrees, and when we turn the value, let's instead of doing this, let's make a new vector two of. So this is so it's cos of angle. If I remember correctly, cos takes uh, takes degrees, not radians, right? Oh no, it is radians. My bad. Okay, so. Not a big. We are just gonna do angle. What the fuck? Okay. Um. I don't know how how my phone understood that I wanted to say something. But anyway. Okay. So angle times equal uh, math dot uh, the degrees to radians, and let's just use the angle and then. So this is cosinus, and then we're gonna do sinus of this. So now is we've just done some processing to to our to our data, but if we don't save this, if we go back in here, uh, first of all, let's uh, play mode. The result should be the same. So okay, so we have the D pad still in here. Let's close this because we're not gonna use that. Uh, Again, so it still works the same. I, I'm rotating around the tower, um, and now, but now the 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 difference is that I can um, mess with the angle. So now I wonder how I can do it. So I know that I I want it to be in increments of of what actually 45 degrees. So I think, let's see. So I think I can divide it by 45 degrees. I can floor it and then I can multiply it back by 45 degrees. Uh, math F. And just to test this out, uh, let's uh, go back here and um, log our direction. So there dot, um, yeah, to string.
So I think that should work. Just, uh, yeah, just what I've done there. So if I go up, oh. Okay, something is not right. Let's try to debug debug it in uh, in the processor. So let's log in here. Uh, let's get the angle, which is this, and new angle. Which is gonna be not this, but uh, this whole shenanigans. Yeah. And let's put an F0 in here. Like this. Let's try it again. Let's see how it transforms our input. I mean, the way we form the, the angle is not correct, the, uh, that uh, Atan call. So I'm going to the right. So I get an angle of zero. I'm going. Oh, if I let go, it just uh, bonkers. Okay. So that is a problem. If I go up. If I go up, it, it gives me 45, which is not correct. I think I have to subtract uh, half of 45. I don't know why. I think I have to subtract. Uh, but from what do I have to subtract? Here. 45 over, um, and just add it back afterwards. I'm not sure why. It's just my uh, my gut feeling that I have to do that. Oh, uh, one last thing that I want to do. Oh no, no, actually no, just leave it like this for now. So if we go to the left, oh my god, that angle is not correct. <laughs> what have we done? Oh. Yeah, my bad. I have to do it in here. Let's go right. That is a random. Yeah, I know. My gut feeling was was wrong. Okay. Um. Yeah, this is not correct. Let's put a random thing there. Let's see how we how we have to do this. Um. How can we do this? Ah, let's let's try to do it in here. So I have a method of uh, of determining uh, determining those those kind of uh, kinds of things, but it's easier to do it on paper. But we're gonna try to do it in here. So let's get some angles. Uh, so I want a zero. I want let's just uh, zero to ninety, I guess, and just try to do do it there. So let's say. 0, uh, 10 degrees, 45 degrees, and I think I've just saw what I have to do, actually. 45 degrees, um, 50 degrees, and 90 degrees. And 
the result that I want is so I want zero here. I want zero here. I want forty five here. I want forty five also here. And this has to be ninety. So how do we get from this to this? What what uh, what things do we have to do to get between those two? So let's think about what what I've done previously. So I've uh, divided by forty five. I think I should have divided by forty five, but by half forty five maybe. Let's try to get. Uh, so what's half forty five is twenty twenty uh, uh, twenty two point five. Let's get this value also in here, and for this. Uh, psh, because it's on the yeah let's say it's zero for this yeah i think oh we shouldn't have floor i think we should have used round i'm stupid and i've thought about round but not but I, I i wrote floor this is not this shouldn't be floor it should be round I think that's what we need. If I do 45, no, it is round, but I think it's 45 divided by two. Um, let's save this into a const, uh, please. Let, let me save this as a const. Doesn't want me to do it. Uh, const. Uh, psh. Const float age. Let's say uh, this is a float. Divide by age. Multiply by age. Let's put it above there, and let's oh, God damn it. Copy this and paste it in here, and let's see what it does. I think this is gonna work now. I get a zero when I get, uh, go uh, to the right. I get a 22.5. Yeah. Okay. So it's not over two. It was 45. Yeah. But anyway, I can go perfectly to the to the right and left without going up and down. I mean, it's a bit finicky because I put the the half in there. But no, this should be 45. like this let's try this again so when i reach 45 it goes down or when i'm closer to 45 it goes down more like so this is up yeah, yeah. So now it behaves more like a uh, like a pad. I can go diagonals, but uh, yeah, I can just go to the left or to the right without going up and down. So this feels much better. Okay, let's remove this and uh, let's get rid of this. Actually, let's put an enter there just because. Get rid of and actually I think that's it I, I said I said that I'm gonna do something with the device change here I think I'm just gonna keep it a, uh, as a console log for now I might just add something to the screen but I don't want to do the um, do the to hook things up right now Yeah, but let's try it again. Let's clear this. So I can use the gamepad. I can do the... the... 
the keyboard and mouse. I can go back to the gamepad. Yeah, and it feels the same. Nice. Awesome. Now, uh, the last thing that I have to do is add uh, some some speed controls uh, for the yeah for the speed. So let's see. Let's re rearrange some stuff in here. Uh, I don't need the controls manager anymore. I don't need those anymore. Let's get rid of system from here. I actually haven't used the camera, which is nice. I Yes, I thought I, I I was gonna use it. No, because yeah, the camera control is gonna stay on the camera, so uh, they're gonna share the same transform. So I don't need the, the reference to the camera. Global tower data there. I'm gonna move this in here, and I'm gonna have so so this is the offset. Then I'm gonna have private vector. Vector two speed. Yeah. Uh. No, I think I'm gonna split it into two. I I actually don't need it as a vector too. So yeah, so let's do a float. Uh, float. Yeah, float. Float. Speed. X. And speed. Y. Serialize. Field. And what else? Um. Let's say mean value of zero, I guess. So we don't go negative. And now this is the the fun but not fun part. So we have to so 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 right now with the direction in here for the y component we use it as uh, as meters but for the angle we use uh, we as uh, as um, what is it uh, degrees but i think i want the uh, no I, I for sure want the, the the speed that i'm gonna set here to both be in uh, in meters so it so it makes sense because because that uh, this thing with the angle and height is just an implementation detail. I don't want it to be in the editor as is, because it doesn't make sense, at least not for the camera. So let's do a suffix label for both of them, and they're gonna be overlays. And I'm gonna transform. So so the speed, uh, the y speed, um, yeah. Let's not have, doesn't matter if I put the default value there. So I'm gonna multiply y by the speed, uh, speed y component, and then here I'll have to transform this uh, speed in meters um, on the on the x uh, to to yeah basically degrees. So i totally forgot what the uh the um path length of circle i need the length of the circle what is that what is the for for that uh, i don't want the arc length i said i want the the length of the circle Oh, never mind. I'm stupid. I can reduce it by this. So, yeah. So two PR. Okay. So let me get this radius in here. 
Um, let's call it camera offset. Um, speed, uh, no, speed x equals, so what I said, two times massive dot pi times the radius, which is the camera offset. So th this is the length of the circle that I'm, yeah, the, 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 that the camera is uh, uh, positioned onto. And I'm gonna divide this Wait, style. Wait, what? What am I trying to do? So, or what? No. Oh, no. I I get it. So I do. I have the arc length. So so yeah yeah. I have the I have the arc length, and I need to get out the angle. Yeah, I, I needed the arc length. <laughs> How the hell does the internet know this so mo so well? So I need exactly this formula, but I have to move things around so I get uh, so I get this this uh, this uh, arc angle in here. What I want, I want to know uh, based on the on the length of the arc that I'm making. What is this angle? So let's try to let's see how we can do that. So we need to move this, so it's going to be length divided by this part, and then we're going to multiply, okay, so it's the length, which is the span x multiplied by 360, and it's going to be divided by whatever I just copied, this. And I think this is it. I'm just going to multiply it. That's going to give me the... Oh, and also the... No, no, actually no. No, it's fine. We don't need any... We don't need the time involved in here. No, it's... Uh... Maybe if we do some easing, we, we will need some time involved in here, but no. Like, this is okay. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the arc length divided by this, multiplied by 360. And actually, we can simplify this because I can say 180 in here and not do this times 2 down there. Yeah. Well, actually, it, it can be simplified more. This 180 over pi is constant, and I can just do speed divided by by the offset multiplied by this uh, by this constant. But actually, it's fine as is. Uh, derived from our length function. Let's just uh, plop this link in here for if I if I need to to read more or remind myself how I did that. Um, now I'm not gonna be able to move because I have to specify the speed at which I want to move at. So let's say I want to move by and actually yeah, uh, uh, ten meters. It's gonna be. This is not meters. Yeah. No. I. I need. I need to add. Uh, I need to add something here. So it's meters per second. No. I. I do need uh, time in here. So time dot delta time. God damn it.
yeah, let's try it now. So I'm moving around the tower, let's try to go up. I mean, it feels kind of the same. I'm, uh, actually let's go right here, might be easier to see. I'm looking at the, the imperfect shape of the tower to see how fast it's moving. And it feels like it's the same speed uh, moving around, uh, around the tower and uh, going up and down. So that's nice. I mean, it's quite slow actually, but uh, let's let's increase the the speed a bit by like let's put uh, 25 meters per second, and let's put some spaces. Let's make it look a little bit more pretty. Let's put uh, a space in here. Let's put a space in here. Let's also uh, put a new label on this offset from tower it's just offset then I already express that and let's put a suffix on this too it's gonna be meters how many meters from the tower the camera is be is gonna be there we go that looks that looks cute let's play and let's try to move again yeah this feels better There we go. So this is left and right, this is up and down. Kind of feels the same. But anyway, it can be, we can change those, uh, those, uh, those speeds independently, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Cool. Okay, let's do some uh, code review. And then... Uh, uh, actually, one thing. So I've added a... Yeah. So camera controller. Let's, so we have those. We have made those pretty. We have a direction, an angle, and a height. We are looking at the move action, we're doing cleanup, we haven't done anything with the device except logging it in the console, which is okay for now. Looks fine. Yeah, what we haven't tested actually is if I play the game, I can move, whatever. But if I pause the game, yeah, I can no longer move. So I'm trying to move what I can, but if I play again, uh, I have to focus the game. Yeah, if I play again, I can start moving. Yeah, so that, that also works. So the camera control is fine. The uh, D-pad processor, I think there's nothing more I can do for it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I could skip this um, this conversion to degrees, and instead of having 45, I could use uh, I could use pi in here. I mean, uh, what uh, pi over four instead of 45. It might make it uh, a bit faster. And I could do it. Actually, I'm gonna do it. Just because it doesn't really help to have, uh, to have that 45 in there. Okay, so this is the angle. We're gonna remove this. And instead of 45, let's make a constant in here. Private, private, const float. Um, Dig 45, let's call it. 
It's pi over 4. It is pi over 4, right? Yeah, because 2 pi is 360, pi is 180, pi over 2 is 19, so yeah, pi over 4. And just replace it in here. Yeah, and this should do the same thing as before, but now with less uh, less calculations. So let's try it. Yeah, there we go. Still does the same thing. I can go left and right without going up and down, except when I really go on on diagonals. Awesome. So the D-pad processor is, is okay. This is the reference to the assembly. Uh, game controls. Game controls? Oh yeah, so this is the generated function. Yeah. This is the, the file that's generated by, by the input system. Yep, I guess that's it. So let's finish this task. And let's commit the changes. Cool. Okay, so I think that that's it for for this stream. We've done we've done some things. Um, yeah, we've done we've done a couple of things. So, so we we've made the uh, we've made some progress. So yeah, the most visual one is this this last one with the with the uh, camera controller. So this is gonna be yeah, this is the heart of the game, being able to to go around the tower. So yeah, this is a huge one. Let's see what it looks like with. There we go. They are shooting out like crazy. Let's get those gizmos back in here. Yeah, now we can actually we can see easier how we rotate around. Up and down, left and right. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, what else have we done? We've um, we've done uh, yeah some more uh, uh, data modeling with the uh, with the waves. So we have this. Uh, wave definition file that uh, for which we can specify yeah we can define uh, what the wave is composed of what type of enemies how many of how many enemies and uh, the stat multiplier and we've generalized the health component so we can uh, first of all uh, the tower is gonna access the the upgrades manager and get multiplier for the health and uh, it's uh, ready to use for enemies too. We just have to, to make another proxy that uh, instead of getting the, the multiplier from the upgrades manager, is going to take the multiplier from the waves manager or the wave manager. Because uh, uh, the wave is going to say what type of, uh, or uh, what multiplier each stat is going to have for the enemies. And that's kind of it. That's what we've done today. We've yeah, we've done quite a bit. It's actually nice. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start um, probably tomorrow. I'm gonna continue working on the on refining more more parts of this. So so probably next stream we're gonna start uh, with this with this level definition. And then uh, start working on uh, yeah. Let's mark this as uh, controls manager. Controls manager. Yeah, I've done this. This is done. I forgot to to mark it as done. Camera controller as well is done. 
Yeah, so so next time we're gonna after after the level is done, we're gonna work on the wave manager and then the game manager. So we're gonna start uh, having some some gameplay or the or the beginning uh, beginning of gameplay in here. And probably after after we have uh, or at least after we have the wave manager, uh, we're gonna start working on uh, on uh, the enemies some more and just yeah get rid of our uh, dummy enemy and start making some uh, some real enemies with uh, with more stats and yeah that uh, enemies that can interact with the game like damage the damage the tower. And Stuff like that. Yeah. And after we have at least one enemy, one, yeah, we're gonna start working on on the weapons. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some preparing for for next time and just uh, expand this, uh, expand and uh, think of uh, how we can do do more of the stuff and how it's gonna how they interact with each other. Yeah, so that's that's it. Um yeah. This is it for now. Yeah, we're going to I'm going to stream again next uh, Saturday and we're going to continue. It. So, thanks for being here and uh, see you again next time.